Noble and Cooley makes its signature snare drums from a single piece of wood. It's been doing it this way since 1854, making it the oldest drum factory in the United States. The quality of the wood is what determines the drum's unique sound. The company has survived two fires, economic crises, and growing competition from mass manufacturers. But adapting century-old techniques and machines is what helped keep the business afloat. We went to Massachusetts to see how seven generations of one family have kept this factory still standing. Father and son Jay and Nick Jones work on all stages of production alongside a handful of employees. There's about, about 37, 38 steps to build a snare drum from start to finish. You can mess up at every single step, and I have. It all starts with good wood. Jay debarks logs by hand. Then he trims it into strips that are 5 eighths of an inch thick. He gets a few passes in, then turns the log over for more cuts. By rotating the log again and again and again, we're trying to get the, the prettiest, straightest grain that's going to bend. This is walnut, one of the nine wood species Noble and Cooley uses in its shells. Next, Jay brings the planks to the planer, which shaves and smooths it to the right thickness. At this point, they start to sort for quality by eye. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be tough to make a drum out of. Only the best planks will become drum shells. We're not even going to play with it. Over the years, we know what's going to bend well, what's not going to bend well, and what's worth taking a chance on because of the beautiful grain. Start by taking down the pressure. Jay steams the wood for exactly three hours. In this cast iron steam oven, that's about 150 years old. He takes out a plank, feeds it into the bending machine, presses the pedal, and what was once a long rectangle is now a perfect circle. He stuffs it into a wooden form, rolls it over to Nick who hammers in a center support. Jay and Nick have to be precise with their timing to bend each shell into a form before it cools off. Steam bending is what sets a Noble and Cooley snare drum apart from many drums on the market. Mass manufactured ones are often made with multiple layers of wood and glue instead of a single plank. You can see the pace that we normally do it at. The shells sit in forms for about three and a half weeks before it's time to glue the edges and support hoops. This is one of Lou Scalzo's tasks. The shell stays like this for 24 hours, but when it's out, it starts to resemble a drum. Lou uses a lathe to smooth out the surface. He goes over the shell twice, once manually, and the second on auto. This is also when Nick and Jay have to make a big decision on the drum's future. If something is absolutely stunningly gorgeous, we're gonna set that aside to oil it, to have it be as minimal finish and natural as possible. If there's, you know, the grain is a little bland or whatever, then we're gonna set that aside for something that's gonna get painted. Nick lightly sands the shell, then applies boiled linseed oil with a rag. Depending on the wood, Nick will do this four to seven more times before the final wax layer. But the shell must rest for a few hours between each coat of oil. I love the contrast in that green, that varied color pattern. I try to center it in the drums to the best of our ability. If the wood doesn't pass Nick and Jay's standards, it goes to Lou for painting. For this drum, he's adding a sparkle coat. He brings the drum over to these rollers to dry it evenly without drips. But no matter if it's been oiled or painted, every drum needs hardware. The fabrication of all the brass pieces is all done in-house like these parts of the throw-off that Jay designed himself. 
Jobs and our drum designer said he needed a throw off mechanism that was quiet and solid and this is what I came up with. Nick takes each drum shell and drills out the holes. This is one of the hardest parts because if you drill even one hole in the wrong spot, the entire drum is ruined. He's even given himself a no drill Fridays rule. Every drum I've catastrophically ruined has been from drilling something wrong on a Friday afternoon. So I just don't do it anymore. Then he checks that the top and bottom edges are perfectly level. So as you can see, there's light coming through underneath here, which means that the shell is not sitting perfectly flat. So we need to square and level that edge and then cut it to a point before we can finish it and put it together. Again, it's just that attention to detail to make sure it is perfect before the heads go on. To put it all together, Nick lays out all the hardware and screws each piece in by hand. One of his final touches here is to stamp the Noble and Cooley logo on the inside and write in the serial number. He logs this in a notebook along with all the details like the size and finish. The company has kept a record of all the drums it's made this way. We have all those notebooks kept in a safe that we're able to pull out and reference to see, you know, when they were built and where they went. Finally, the drums are ready to play. And you'd think that Jay and Nick would be expert drummers. My brother is a drummer. We grew up playing bands together and you don't need two drummers. My famous line is, I play the radio and I'm pretty good at it. So general manager Luke Garrow, who is a drummer, will often give him a play test. This is our 14-inch piccolo maple. It's one of our most popular models of the Solid Shell Classic. Drummers like Phil Collins or Matt Chamberlain have used this on recordings. Since most Noble and Cooley drums are made to order, pieces can vary from about $700 for a single drum to several thousand for a whole kit or highly customized pieces. We decided right at the forefront that the world did not need another mediocre product. And if we we're gonna do this, we we're gonna do it top shelf. We we're gonna go after the best quality of sound and the, find the best way to achieve that. But they didn't start out making drums for musicians. Back in 1853, Silas Noble made toy drums as Christmas gifts in his kitchen. <laughs> then in January, he and James P. Cooley, Jay and Nick's ancestor, decided it would make a good business. That first year, they made about 600. During the Civil War, they made their first real drums for the Union Army, which used them to communicate orders across battlefields. At least one of these drums survives today in their museum after a soldier picked it up at Gettysburg. Production ramped up quickly, and by 1873, Noble and Cooley was producing 80,000 drums a year, most of them toys. In fact, musical toys were Noble and Cooley's staple business throughout most of their history. The factory suffered two fires, but the business has been on the same plot of land since 1889. Jay started the music division in the 1980s, around the same time most American toy manufacturing started shifting overseas. Throughout its history, Noble and Cooley has been affected by major economic events, but not always in an expected way. The Great Depression uh, was not a bad time for this company. A toy drum is number one, inexpensive, and number two, it was large. It looked like a lot under the Christmas tree. So come Christmas time, we were very busy. The pandemic also gave it a boost. People are at home, they're looking to expand their kits that they already have, or pick up a new snare drum, replace something. Our back order log is bigger than it's been in my 15 years here. Good afternoon, Noble and Cooley. Even with this recent uptick in business, Nick and Jay still aren't looking to go up against the big guys in the drum industry if it means sacrificing quality. Every drum that I'm putting in a box at the end of the day, I know the customer who it's going to, or at least the shop it's shipping to. I like that, you know, having, having that ability to know who you're building a drum for makes you care that much more about the drum you're making. And I don't want to lose that. Being able to come to work with my son every day is just absolutely fabulous. Um, I couldn't think of a, a better partner and I hope he feels the same. Yep, for sure, for sure. I'm just gonna do my best to take it over and run with it.